So there you guys go. We have the axle lock, axle lock. That rear diff is locked up and uh, we'll see how far or how much farther we can go up this hill. What is going on today guys? My name is Alex. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking about why one of the main reasons I bought this brand new 2020 Ram 2500 power wagon. Now a lot of 4x4 owners um, don't even really think to consider about a locking differential and how important it can be when you're going off-road. My Ram 1500 I used to own had two open differentials, one in the front, one in the back, and that really um, gave it some challenges when I was gonna go off-road. Now, one of the biggest things that kind of bugs me from the comments is when people assume that four-wheel drive means that all four wheels are going to receive power all the time. And what is true about that statement is all four wheels can receive power, but they are probably not gonna receive it all at the same time. A simple four x four system with a locking transfer case means that in most situations, you're gonna have one wheel in the front and one wheel in the back that's gonna receive the majority of engine power. And this is exactly where locking differentials come to play. With a front and rear locking differential and a true locking transfer case, you actually now have the ability to have all four wheels receive equal amounts of torque and power no matter what situation you're in. The other thing that kind of drives me crazy is when people mention four wheel drive low, as in everything locks up in four wheel drive low, and that couldn't be further from the case. I mean, yes, you're gonna have more torque and wheel control to the wheels that are gonna receive power 100%, but four wheel drive low, you have to think as more as a gear. It's really just a range, it's a speed range. It has nothing to do with locking up wheels, locking up differentials. So let's come down here and briefly explain what a differential does. So this is my differential in this truck. It's a lockable differential and it also has a limited slip when it is not locked, a helical style limited slip. So obviously engine power comes in from the front and it splits between the two axles driving both wheels in a perfect situation. Now with an open differential, what's gonna happen is more or less torque likes to take the path of least resistance. If this wheel was jacked up in the air, which it is, and this wheel was on, let's say, hard surface, all the power would go to this wheel because it's easier to spin and you would not go anywhere because this wheel wouldn't turn. Limited slip, like what I have in here, will send power to the wheel on the ground, but it is not a true 50-50 split. Most limited slips tend to be around 20 to 40% differential split, depending on you know, the aggressiveness of the limited slip, and that will also affect the drivability on, let's say, the roads. The more aggressive your limited slip is, the more likely you're gonna have some wheel skip. And then lastly, is a locking differential, which can 100% split the power 50-50, no matter what. Now, a limited slip is not a bad differential to have. It will definitely help you in off-road situations, and it's actually really good in stuff like snow, as well as really good and seamless when you're driving on the road. However, it is not a locker. A limited slip is not a locker, as I'll show you in a second here. This wheel is slightly jacked up off the ground, and I will put this thing in drive without the differential locked. And I think what's gonna happen, I'm not 100%, I think this wheel will just spin, and there won't be enough torque um, transferred to the other wheel. So what I read about this helical diff is it'll transfer around 20 to 25%. So if that is enough torque to pull this thing forward, it should pull it forward. If it's not, that wheel will just spin and we will go nowhere. So we will put this thing in drive and see what happens here. Here we go. So as far as I can tell, that limited, as far as I can tell, that limited slip is not doing anything. All right, now we will see if we can lock this diff up. So let's do rear lock. Lock in progress. So as you guys can see, we are locked. And uh, this should pull the jacket right out of there. I'm a little nervous, but hopefully everything will be okay. Here we go. Now I'm interested to see what's happening. We're not going anywhere. 
but I imagine both wheels are just spinning because I think that one might be on ice. <laughs> oh, I see what I did. Of course, I make this explanation video and uh, it doesn't really go like I want it to. Probably two reasons for that. Number one, this wheel is on a little bit of ice, so the traction is going to be a little bit less than if we were on gravel. Secondly, if you can see the way I jacked up the truck, it's kind of closer to the center. It should probably be closer over there, but there's brake lines and crap there. And I don't want this jack to fall and get snagged on a brake line because it'll rip it right off. So that's why it's there, but it probably lifting the whole axle a little bit. Obviously this side's off to the ground completely, but there's probably some pressure off here as well. Um, so that's probably why this truck didn't pull out. Anyways, the point I was trying to make is that when the differential is locked, there's gonna be a 50-50 split of power. So it doesn't matter if this wheel is 100% elevated, that wheel is still gonna get plenty of power to move the truck forward. Whereas with a limited slip, it only transfers around 20 to 25% of the torque and 75% of the torque will go to the wheel up on the ground, or up in the air, sorry. And it may not have enough torque to actually spin that wheel. Um, so that's what I was trying to get at. Obviously the test didn't go as planned, but we're about to jump into the real world, um, a little snowy hill. And I think it'll be pretty concrete, the difference between a limited slip and a locker in a real world situation where you actually need it. All right, guys, we're out in the real world here with the old power wagon. And uh, I'm gonna show you everything I just explained to you. And we're gonna apply it to a real world situation with this truck. All right, so we are obviously in two wheel drive with the rear axle unlocked. And we're gonna see how far we can make it up this hill just relying on the limited slip. So let's see what happens. All right, we're off. A little slippy slidey, but that's what the that limited slip is there for to help. Let's see if we can make it up here to my other camera. Pushing. All right, so I will say we are safely kind of stopped here. I'll mark where I stopped and we'll see if I don't slide backwards. All right, and I'll see with this rear differential locked if we can get higher up the hill. All right, here we go. We're gonna lock this differential Let's see if it locks right away it might not you might have to put this in reverse just for a second to get it to lock in you should never try and lock a diff if you're spinning out um, that's a really quick way to actually blow up a differential um, I mean if you're stuck you're stuck but ideally the best way to do is to slowly roll those wheels into the axle lock so there you guys go we have the axle lock axle lock that rear diff is locked up and uh, we'll see how far or how much farther we can go up this hill with this wonderful truck. Here we go. Oh yeah, wow, night and day. Night and day. Let's see if it stays night and day. Now I'm not gonna use too much speed. My last run I was just pretty even on the throttle. So we'll try to do the same. Real world test, obviously, nothing's gonna be 100% exactly the same, but we'll try our best. Oh yeah, so right here is where it really started to slip. And you can see like, it's just climbing. I don't think those real wheels are slipping right now. Could be wrong, Let's see what the footage says. So right here is where I got stuck. Well, stuck. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, not even a question. I'll climb this whole hill if I need to and just two wheel drive lock. It is kind of cool to see how much of a difference a 
locker versus the limited slip makes. Um, it's kind of night and day, which I'm very happy about because uh, I did spend a good chunk of change on this truck and I'm happy that the lockers do actually make a big difference. Well guys, that's gonna wrap up the video for today. I hope everyone had a good New Year's Eve last night. And um, if you like the video, don't forget to leave that thumbs up. And if you like cool stuff like this, don't forget to subscribe. We'd love to have you on board. I got quite a bit planned for this beautiful power wagon. But anyways, enough of me. We'll see you on the next freaking video, guys.